The Viasys LTV1200, or laptop ventilator, is an essential piece of equipment contained within the strategic national stockpile for use in the event of significantly increased demand. Weighing under 15 pounds with multiple available modes of ventilation, this portable equipment contains an internal battery, air compressor, audio alarm system, and default settings for infant, pediatric, and adult patients. This makes it appropriate for providing safe, effective ventilation during periods of increased need. This web-based learning module is designed to assist personnel of varying skill levels in the basic setup and operation of the LTV-1200. The module contains the following chapters. Ventilator panels and controls description, setup, initiation of default settings according to patient age, choice of power source, alarms and troubleshooting, and finally, gaining access to advanced settings for experienced healthcare providers. Please refer to the manufacturer's operation manual for complete details on the operation of this complex piece of medical equipment and to the spiral bound quick reference guide companion literature. This module is not intended to serve as a substitute for experience and training in providing mechanical ventilation. The right-sided ventilator panel contains the following ports, a 22 millimeter patient breathing circuit, a high pressure sensing transducer, a low pressure sensing transducer, an exhalation valve drive line, and an alarm sounder. The essential features for emergency operation on the left-sided ventilator panel include the cooling fan, the oxygen inlet port, and the air inlet as well as the AC-DC power port connector. Both the cooling fan and the air inlet must remain unobstructed during ventilator operation. The front ventilator panel contains the on standby button, controls for selecting ventilator modes, including control mode, assist control mode with apnea backup when enabled, SIMV or synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation, CPAP, or Continuous Positive Airway Pressure, and NPPV, or Non-Invasive Positive Pressure Ventilation. There are also breath delivery types, including volume or pressure, power source and battery indicators, variable control settings, the PEEP control setting and display, adjustable alarm settings, a set value knob for adjusting the variable controls, the alarm silence and reset button, the ventilator inoperative or vent inop indicator, a real-time airway pressure display, a patient effort indicator, which lights when a patient trigger is detected, and the select button adjacent to the display window, which shows monitored data, alarm messages, and the extended features menu. Lastly, there is a manual breath administration button, a low pressure oxygen source indicator, and ventilator control lock button. Prior to turning on the ventilator, the following must be connected. The patient breathing circuit, the high and low pressure sensing transducers to the non-interchangeable ports marked flow exducer with the proximal patient sense lines oriented upwards, the exhalation valve drive line, and the AC-DC power port connector if desired. Be mindful to push the safety release button located on the AC-DC power port connector when removing or changing the external power supply. In addition, a choice with regard to oxygen supply during ventilator setup must be made. The three options are demonstrated here. For clinical settings where an external oxygen source is unavailable, the ventilator's internal compressor can deliver appropriately pressurized gas with an FiO2 of 21% when the oxygen source port is capped. To operate the ventilator under conditions when a consistently higher percentage of FiO2 is required, a green high pressure oxygen hose must be connected to both the labeled oxygen inlet port and a high pressure source, delivering a range of between 40 and 80 PSIG. Lastly, a low pressure oxygen source, such as an oxygen concentrator or canister, may be connected to the oxygen inlet port with the addition of a low pressure adapter. Note that the low pressure oxygen source indicator on the front panel of the ventilator 
must be activated as indicated by a bright green LED light when a low pressure system is engaged. An oxygen computer chart that assumes a 1 to 2 inspiratory to expiratory ratio exists on page 31 of the quick reference guide to assist in the determination of the appropriate oxygen input flow based on the desired FiO2 and the patient's current minute volume. For example, if the desired FiO2 for a patient is 80% and they are generating a minute volume of 14 liters per minute as reported in the ventilator display window, take the intersection of these two lines and project horizontally to the left axis to determine the oxygen input flow rate of approximately 20 liters per minute. In the same manner, the graph can also be used to approximate FiO2 being delivered to the patient based on oxygen input flow and minute volume. Once assembly is completed, turn the ventilator on by pressing the on standby button. When the ventilator is powered up, all display lights will be lit and the alarm will sound, followed by a chirp. The ventilator will then undergo a rapid series of power on self tests and is acceptable for use only if the scrolled message in the display ends with post passed. If post failed is reported, the ventilator is unsuitable for use. If, when the ventilator is turned on, the patient query feature is enabled, the message same patient will show in the display window. To begin ventilation with the same settings in use prior to the last ventilator shutdown, press the select button while the same patient is displayed. If the patient query is not enabled, turn the set value knob until new patient is displayed, then press the select button to the left of the display window. Then use the set value knob to select the desired patient type, either infant, pediatric, or adult, and press the select button. Once the desired patient age default settings are selected, the mode of ventilation may be changed by pressing the mode buttons to toggle between mode settings. A confirmatory second button push is required to change modes. For each of the variable controls and PEEP settings, a normal LED light intensity will display when active. Non-adjustable controls will be dimmed to denote inactivity for a given mode of ventilation. Each of the variable controls and PEEP may be adjusted by pressing the corresponding button below the value, which will cause that control only to be bright while the remaining are dimmed. Then adjust the set value knob to the desired level and then reselect the control button to confirm. In this manner, further desired adjustments can be made to achieve desired ventilator performance. In a similar manner, ventilator alarm parameters may be adjusted using the red highlighted box display on the right side of the front panel. Press the corresponding button under the red high pressure limit, low pressure limit, and low minute volume controls individually, then adjust the set volume knob to the desired setting, and then reselect each control button to confirm. The display window automatically scrolls through the monitored data that applies for each selected mode of ventilation and includes real-time measurement based on breath cycles. Alternatively, to monitor a specific parameter of interest, you may manually scroll through the display by pressing the select button to the left of the window once to display the next monitored item. To return to automatic scrolling, press the select button twice within 0.3 seconds. To turn the ventilator off, the patient must first be disconnected from the ventilator. Then press and hold the on standby button for three seconds, followed by the silence reset button. The vent in-op LED will remain lit for approximately five minutes. The LTV1200 can function on an external power source as well as an internal battery as shown by three LED indicators on the upper right-hand side of the front panel. External power sources include an AC adapter, a DC battery, a universal power supply, or a transport battery system. Use of the internal battery when fully charged is limited and dependent on the ventilator settings. The internal battery may last up to 45 minutes when the LED battery level indicator is illuminated green. An amber colored LED indicates the battery level is low and when the LED turns red is critically low with approximately five minutes or less of remaining battery. 
Because of these limitations and for maximum patient safety, the internal battery should only be utilized for brief periods during transfer of power supply or patient transport and monitored closely when in use. The battery level indicator will be unlit when the ventilator is reconnected to an external power source. When the ventilator is connected to an adequate external power source, the charge status indicator will illuminate. A green LED indicator indicates the internal battery is fully charged. An amber color indicates that the internal battery is in the process of charging, and a red color indicates either an internal battery or charge fault, so that only an external power source can be used to operate the ventilator until the battery is replaced. The charge status indicator LED will flash amber for a few seconds, or up to an hour on a deeply discharged battery when external power is initially connected to the ventilator. The external power indicator LED will illuminate green when the external power source is at an acceptable level and amber when the level is low. When the ventilator is running on the internal battery, this indicator light will be off. At any point during ventilator operation, an alarm may be triggered indicated by a specific message in the display window on the front panel. An alarm may be silenced by pressing the silence reset button on the front panel. To reset a corrected alarm, press the silence reset button again. Several key alarms and troubleshooting options will now be discussed. For a complete listing of additional alarm parameters and solutions, please see the LTV1200 operator's manual. An apnea XXBPM alarm indicates that the time since a patient's last breath has exceeded the set apnea interval and the ventilator has entered the apnea backup ventilation mode. Reevaluate the patient's condition and ventilator rate settings. This message will continue until the operator has reset the alarm or the patient triggers two consecutive breaths. The ventilator will then exit the apnea backup mode and resume previous settings with the message apnea flashing until the silence reset button is pushed twice. A disk sense message indicates a disruption in pressure sensing. Make sure that the patient circuit is connected, that all three pressure sensing lines are connected on the right-sided ventilator panel, and that none of the lines are pinched or occluded. The high O2 press alarm occurs when the oxygen inlet pressure exceeds the acceptable limit for a given oxygen source, either greater than 85 PSIG for a high pressure source, or greater than 10 PSIG for a low pressure source. If the ventilator is connected to a high pressure oxygen source, make sure that the low O2 pressure indicator on the front panel is not engaged and then reduce the oxygen inlet pressure. The low O2 press message is displayed when the oxygen inlet pressure is less than the minimal acceptable level of 35 PSIG. Either increase the oxygen inlet pressure or replace the oxygen supply cylinder with a new one. When the high PEEP or low PEEP messages are displayed, the patient circuit positive end expiratory pressure is either above or below the set ventilator parameters. Reevaluate the ventilator settings check for occlusion of the patient circuit, exhalation valve, and or PEEP valve, and consider disassembling and cleaning the above items. The high press or low press alarms indicate that the circuit pressure either exceeds or falls below the variable control set pressure settings for each breath. Inspect the patient circuit for occlusions, kinks, or disconnection, and then reevaluate ventilator settings. A low min vol message occurs when the exhaled minute volume is lower than the set low minute volume parameter on the front panel. This alarm is automatically silenced for convenience during the first 20 seconds of ventilator operation. When it occurs, examine the exhalation valve body for disconnects on the patient circuit and the right-sided panel of the ventilator. A locked message will display without an audible alarm and indicates that a button has been pressed while the ventilator controls are locked. Press the control lock button to release. If the alarm continues, press and hold the control lock button for three seconds. Lastly, an in-op alarm indicates either that the ventilator has been switched from on to standby or that it has detected any condition that is deemed unsafe. 
If this occurs during ventilator operation, remove the patient from the circuit and either change the ventilator or manually ventilate the patient until the problem is resolved. The LTV-1200 also contains a series of advanced settings for more experienced providers. These include additional alarm options, increased ventilator options such as rise time and communication settings, and spontaneous breathing trial settings. To access the extended features menu from an active ventilation mode, press and hold the select button adjacent to the display window for three seconds. Use the set value knob to view the next item in the menu and then the select button to enter a specific menu item. To exit a given extended features menu, adjust the set value knob until the exit option is displayed in the panel window. Please see the operator's manual for a complete discussion of available extended feature options.